These are the answers to the stoichiometry practice quiz. Number one, each of the following problems requires you to balance a chemical equation and then do a one-step moles-to-moles conversion. Part A, balance the following equation. So there are eight sulfur atoms on the right. Let's start by balancing the sulfur atoms. We're going to put an eight in front of the molecule H2S. Now as a result of adding the eight, now there are 16 hydrogen atoms on the left, so we need to balance the hydrogen atoms by putting a 16 in front of the HCl on the right. And now that we've done that, there are 16 chlorine atoms on the right, so we need to balance the chlorine atoms by putting an 8 in front of the Cl2 on the left. At this point, the equation is balanced. So in part B, it says calculate the number of moles of chlorine, Cl2, that are needed to produce 50.4 moles of hydrogen chloride according to the balanced chemical equation in part A. We'll start by drawing a line for the conversion factor. Let's put the units of moles of HCl on the bottom. And since we're trying to figure out the number of moles of chlorine, let's put moles of chlorine on the top. Now we get the numbers from the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. So there is a coefficient of 8 next to the Cl2, and there is a coefficient of 16 next to the HCl. We pick up our calculator and we type in 50.4 times 8 divided by 16, and we get 25.2, and that is moles of chlorine. That's the answer. Okay, in the next part, we have to balance this equation in part C. There are five chlorine atoms on the left. Let's start by balancing the chlorine atoms. We'll put a five in front of the HCl on the right. And we notice that there are four oxygen atoms on the right. Let's balance the oxygen atoms by putting a four in front of the H2O on the left. Now at this point, we have eight hydrogens on the left. But since we have a total of five plus three, eight hydrogens on the right, the hydrogens are balanced, the phosphorus, there's only one phosphorus on both sides, so the equation is balanced, and we can move on to part D. Calculate the number of moles of water that are needed to produce 8.35 moles of hydrogen chloride, HCl, according to the balanced chemical equation in part C. We'll start by drawing the line for our conversion factor. Let's put the units of moles of HCl on the bottom. We are trying to calculate the number of moles of water. Let's put moles of water on the top. The coefficient for water is four. The coefficient for HCl is five. So the math we're doing is 8.35 times 4 divided by 5. And if we do this math, we get 6.68 moles of water for the answer. So on to the next part. We have to balance this equation in part E. There are three chlorine atoms on the right. Let's start by balancing the chlorine atoms by putting a 3 in front of the HCl. Now we notice that there are three hydrogen atoms on the left, but there are two hydrogen atoms on the right. So what do we do? Well, the least common multiple of two and three is six. So we need to get six hydrogen atoms on each side. Let's put a six in front of the HCl, and let's put a three in front of the H2 on the other side. Now there are six chlorine atoms on the left. We can balance the chlorine atoms by putting a two in front of the AlCl3. Finally, let's balance the aluminum atoms by putting a two in front of the Al. And the equation is now balanced, and we can move on to part F. Calculate the number of moles of hydrogen gas 
that would be produced from 29.6 moles of aluminum according to the balanced chemical equation in Part E. So we'll draw the line for our conversion factor. Let's put moles of aluminum on the bottom. And we're trying to get into hydrogen gas for the answer. Let's put moles of H2 on the top. The coefficient for H2 is 3. And the coefficient for aluminum is 2. So the math we're doing here is 29.6 times 3 divided by 2. And if we do this math, we get 44.4 moles of hydrogen for our answer. So now we go on to the next question, number two. Each of the following problems requires you to balance a chemical equation and then do a three-step grams-to-grams conversion. We begin in part A with balancing this equation. There are three carbon atoms on the left. Let's start by balancing the carbon atoms. We'll put a three in front of the CO2. There are eight hydrogen atoms on the left. Let's balance the hydrogen atoms by putting a four in front of the H2O. Now, as far as oxygens, three times two is six plus four more, that makes a total of 10 oxygen atoms on the right. Let's balance the oxygen atoms by putting a five in front of the O2. So now this equation is balanced and we can move on to part B. Calculate the mass of oxygen, O2, that is needed to react completely with 81.7 grams of propane, C3H8, according to the balanced chemical equation in part A. Now we're gonna set up three conversion factors. We're gonna end with units of grams of O2. Calculate the mass of oxygen, O2. Let's put in all the units and then we can fill in the appropriate numbers. So grams of C3H8 goes on the bottom in step one. This will be a periodic table step we're gonna go from grams to moles of that same chemical. So moles of C3H8 on the top. Now we put moles of C3H8 on the bottom in step two. And since we're trying to convert into oxygen, we'll put moles of O2 on the top. This will be the coefficient step. Now we're back to the periodic table. Let's put units of moles of O2 on the bottom. And then finally, units of grams of O2 on the top. So the first step is a periodic table step. We can figure out how many grams of C3H8 there are in one mole by looking up the atomic masses of carbon and hydrogen on the periodic table. So carbon has a mass of 12.01 and there are three of them. Hydrogen has a mass of 1.008 and there are eight of them in the formula. So we add up those numbers and we get 44.094 grams in one mole of propane, C3H8. Now we go to the coefficients. In step two, there is a coefficient of five next to the O2, and there is a coefficient of one next to the C3H8. All right, and then back to the periodic table. How many grams are there in one mole of oxygen? It's not 16, which is what the periodic table says, it's going to be 32 because it is O2. So 16 times two is 32. We are now set up to do this math. 81.7 divided by 44.094 times five times 32. On our calculator, we get a number which has not been rounded off yet. So I've written down 296.46 since the given number, 81.7, has three significant figures, the final answer should be rounded to three significant figures. So therefore, we get 296 for our final answer, 296 grams of O2. All right, let's move on to part C. We have to balance this equation. There are two phosphorus atoms on the left. Let's start by balancing the phosphorus atoms. We'll put a two in front of the H3PO4. Now, we have six hydrogen atoms on the right. 
let's go ahead and put a 3 in front of the water so we can balance the hydrogen atoms. At this point, we have a total of 5 plus 3 oxygen atoms on the left. That means we have 8 oxygen atoms on the left, but we already have 8 oxygen atoms on the right, so the equation is completely balanced. We can move on to part D. Calculate the mass of phosphoric acid, H3PO4, that would be produced from 5.64 grams of water according to the balanced chemical equation in part C. Again, we have three steps from grams to grams. We're going to finish up with grams of H3PO4. Let's put all the units in place. Our first step is to put grams of water on the bottom, and we're converting to moles so moles of water on the top. In our second step, it'll be moles of water on the bottom, and we're trying to convert into H3PO4, so moles of H3PO4 on the top. Finally, in our third step, moles of H3PO4 on the bottom, and grams of H3PO4 on the top. Okay, now let's fill in the numbers. The periodic table, tells us that the molar mass of water is 18.016 because that's two hydrogens and one oxygen. We get the numbers for step two from the coefficients. There's a coefficient of two in front of the H3PO4 and a coefficient of three in front of the water. Finally, back to the periodic table, how many grams are there in one mole of H3PO4? There's three hydrogens, one phosphorus, and four oxygens. That gives us a grand total of 97.994 grams in one mole of H3PO4. Now we have to do the math, starting with 5.64 grams of water. We're going to do divided by 18.016 times 2 divided by 3 times 97.994 and we get about 20.452 which I have not rounded yet. We're going to round off our answer based on 5.64. The final answer should have three significant figures so this will be expressed as 20.5 grams of H3PO4, that's phosphoric acid. All right let's move on to part E, we have to balance this equation. There are three hydrogen atoms on the left, and there are two hydrogen atoms on the right. The least common multiple of two and three is six, so we need to get six hydrogen atoms on each side. Let's put a two in front of the NH3, and let's put a three in front of the water. Now there are three oxygen atoms, on the right, let's balance the oxygen atoms by putting a 3 in front of the NO molecule on the left. Finally, we have to balance the nitrogen atoms. Now we can use a fraction to balance the nitrogen atoms temporarily because we have five nitrogen atoms on the left. So we're going to use the fraction 5 over 2 to balance the nitrogen atoms on the right. At this point, to get rid of that fraction, we can multiply each coefficient by 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6. Now we have 5 halves times 2 is just 5. So we get rid of the fraction. And finally, we have a coefficient of 6. So the equation is officially balanced with coefficients of 4, 6, 5, and 6. And we can move on to part F. Calculate the mass of water that would be produced in the reaction above if 38.4 grams of nitrogen gas is also produced, according to the balanced chemical equation in Part E. So in three steps, we're going to go from grams of nitrogen, N2, to grams of water, H2O. Let's put in all the units, starting with grams of N2 on the bottom in step one. We're going to convert into moles of N2 
So moles of N2 on the top. In our second step, we put moles of N2 on the bottom, and we're trying to get to water. Let's put moles of water on the top. In our third step, moles of water on the bottom, and then finally grams of water on the top. Now we can fill in our numbers. The periodic table tells us that nitrogen weighs 14.01, but this is N2, so it's 14.01 times 2. One mole of N2 is 28.02. In our second step, we have the coefficient of 6 next to the water, and we have a coefficient of 5 next to the N2, the nitrogen. In our third step, one mole of water weighs 18.016 grams. So now all we have to do is the math. Starting with 38.4, it's going to be divided by 28.02 times 6 divided by 5 times 18.016. We get 29.628. We haven't rounded this number off. The final answer should be rounded to three significant figures based on the initial value of 38.4, which also has three sig figs. So our final answer, rounded to three sig figs, is 29.6 grams of water. All right, well, that was the last question on the practice quiz. Hopefully, these answers and explanations were helpful. Thanks for watching, and good luck studying for your quiz.